All right, so Qualcomm recently detailed their new Snapdragon 88 chip. This is their new upcoming mobile processor that's gonna be appearing on a whole bunch of new phones. But I wanted to do a video not just on the chip and like the devices that are using this, but also other flagship phones that seemingly may not even use this chip next year. So just to open this up, the new chip, the 888, the 888, let's call it that, because 888 does not roll off the tongue very nicely. The 888, uh, there's, I guess, three or four things that I think are important. Number one, it's a five nanometer node, Samsung fabrication, so it should be more efficient than previous generations of Snapdragon chips. Secondly, it's got a modem integrated into the chip itself. So last year with the 865G, you had to put the 5G modems just separately. It was a separate module that took up space in the insides of phones. This is now on board. And in theory, that should reduce the cost of production. Thirdly, let's talk about performance. And this is debatable. So the way they market it, the new chip has a 25% increase in CPU performance and a 35% increase in GPU performance. But if you look at the leaked benchmarks, that bump up in CPU performance is really only in single core. The moment you go to multi-core, it's a much more modest improvement. The graphical performance though does seem impressive. We'll have to see how it plays out because it does rely on tech that not a lot of developers are using in their games right now. But the biggest improvement that I see on the Snapdragon 888 has got to be in its image processing. The new Spectra ISP can handle three streams. So phones with three cameras, which is the vast majority of the flagships out there, will be able to take images from all three sensors and combine the data to give you the best image possible. So all in all, the Snapdragon 888 is a faster chip, probably more energy efficient, and will give you better images than previous Snapdragons. Okay, now as I looked at this thing, and I looked at the kind of devices that are gonna come out with this, because they listed a whole bunch of launch partners like OnePlus and Vivo, like a whole bunch of brands, familiar brands were on there. But the one brand that was not on there, that I thought was a little strange, was Samsung. So we're supposed to be getting the next Samsung Galaxy smartphone in January, either the S21 or S30, whatever they end up calling it. But this is a phone that's been leaked for quite a while, a very unique looking design. The camera bump on the back protrudes quite aggressively and then kind of melts back into the side of the phone. It's a very unique looking device. So it wasn't included in that list of launch partners. That's not super definitive, but we know that Samsung's been working on their Exynos chip. Now, traditionally, their Exynos variants of smartphones are worse performers than the Snapdragons, right? But the leaks and rumors of this new Exynos chip with its AMD GPU component are very competitive. Now, I personally think that they'll still have the Snapdragon 888 variants, but if they don't, and it's just Exynos phones, it'll still be really good. Now, the next phones I wanna talk about are the OnePlus phones. These traditionally come out in April, but next year they're supposed to be coming out in March, a little bit earlier. And there's supposed to be three of them, OnePlus 9, OnePlus 9 Pro, and OnePlus 9e. These are all separate from the Nord lineup. These are just the three regular OnePlus phones. And the thing I'm drawn to is, okay, so I, I like OnePlus phones. In particular, I like the OnePlus 8 Pro. This was a really good camera system. Good ultra wide, good telephoto, great macro lens. This was a cool camera system to me. My favorite from 2020, just in terms of cameras. But the rest of the OnePlus lineup has always suffered from, I don't wanna say mediocre cameras. I just wanna be like, they just, their camera systems could be better. And I feel like with the Snapdragon 888 combined with their camera hardware, they can do something really cool. Like that's just the nature of the combination, right? Normally when you have really good camera hardware, you can do a lot of good stuff with it. But when you have kind of middle of the road camera hardware, which OnePlus phones often have, and you combine it with a triple ISP, I'm convinced that the next OnePlus phones will really be able to take advantage of the Snapdragon 888 image processing. Okay, next up, Pixel phones. So Pixel took a pretty unique direction this year. They released a flagship phone that didn't have a flagship processor in it, but it still had a very competitive experience, right? This felt like a good phone, a little expensive, but solid phone otherwise. The rumor is that Google has been working on their own SOC, ARM-based in conjunction with Samsung to make a chip that is tuned specifically to their kind of project. Now, here's the thing. If you take a step back and you look at the, 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 the mechanics behind all of this stuff, it does not make good financial sense to design and fabricate a custom chip for a phone unless you have huge plans for it, right? That stuff is super, super expensive. It, it, it is 
astronomically expensive to make your own chip for your phones, especially when you have stuff like Snapdragons available, right? This is, Google could use that stuff whenever they want, but they chose, seemingly chose to make their own chip. They call it Project Whitechapel. And this is, this is big. This is huge to me. If you think about what Google represents when it came to phones, like the biggest thing that they did, the, the, the feature that they brought to the whole smartphone game was good computational photography, right? They were the first to do it really well. And it kind of revolutionized the way that we use our smartphones. It revolutionized smartphone photography. Now everybody has computational photography, right? It was interesting to me that this year on the Pixel 5, they chose to not get a high-end Snapdragon chip. They were able to achieve this phone with a mid-range SOC. So if they're making their own, if they're going through the expense and the effort to make their own custom designed chip for their pixel phones my guess is that it's going to it's going to go to the next level whatever they wanted to do whatever they wanted to achieve with the next generation of pixel couldn't have been done with the snapdragon 888 or else they would have just used it right but i think they're going for something bigger and better hopefully the next pixel takes another massive leap in camera tech because we've been stuck with this sensor for a long time since like the pixel 3 it's been using the same camera sensor, the IMX363, I think. It's been a while on the same sensor, and there's got to be a reason why they haven't switched, right? I think they just, they needed their own chip. They needed something to do more. Because when you design your own chip, you can tailor it to your specific needs. If you want your machine learning to process a certain way, if you want your hardware and software to be integrated a certain way, you can do all of that when you have control on the hardware as well as your software. So this year, I think the Snapdragon... You saw nothing, don't tell Qualcomm. Uh, but I think we'll see the Snapdragon 888 in a lot of great Android flagships, but I also think this is the year that we're gonna get diversity so that the high-end Android flagships have different high-end SOCs, not all just the same chip with the same capabilities, which I personally welcome. I like seeing options like that. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.